So we're going to take a look at how to complete and balance, or basically how to write out a chemical reaction. So two different compounds reacting with each other. Um, in order to do this, you have to be able to do what we've already learned, go from the name of a compound into its chemical formula. Our first step is completing, and in order to do that, we need to look at the two compounds we were given. So magnesium nitrate, I want to go from this name to its formula. I do that by saying, okay, magnesium is a plus two, nitrate is a polyatomic, that's a minus one, and then I crisscross, making sure I use parentheses for my nitrate. Um, notice how I wrote them with their charges on one line, and then I crisscrossed on the next line. I'm very intentional about how I lay my work out. Um, I do it in a way that I think helps you make the fewest mistakes possible. Um, so while I'm not like crazy particular that you do it exactly my way every time, do what works for you, um, do know that I'm intentional, I do this for a reason. I think you should at least try it and do it this way until you're really, really good at these. Then do whatever you want. Okay, so that's this magnesium nitrate, which I wrote out. Reacts with. Now, it might say reacts with, it might say is added to, it might just have a plus sign. Some way of telling us that magnesium nitrate and lithium phosphide are going to react in a chemical reaction. So, I'm going to add to this whatever lithium phosphide is. But again, starting on the first slide, writing out lithium, which is a plus one. Phosphide, not phosphate. Phosphide is a minus three, and then I can crisscross. That's the left-hand side of my reaction. Um, if you've seen a chemical reaction before, you know they have an arrow in the middle. So every, anything that's reacting is on the left-hand side of my arrow. Um, those are called my reactants. So. Whatever ends up being on the left-hand side, those are my reactants. I just want you to get used to the names of things. Okay. Um, but now is where I have to start doing something new. So to come up with the right-hand side, to come up with what are called my products, whatever is on the right-hand side is what I'm making, is what's coming out of this chemical reaction, um, I have to somehow rearrange the atoms, the ions that I have. If they don't get rearranged, if they don't repartner with someone new, um, or at least change who they're currently partnered with, then no chemical reaction really took place. Um, you'll notice that both of my reactants had positive ions and negative ions, right? Something positively charged and something negatively charged. The reason what we're looking at are called double displacement is that two of our ions, double, are going to displace, kind of push each other out of the way and switch places. Um, so on the other side, I need everything to have a new partner and I still need to make sure that I have a positive and a negative ion, a positive and a negative ion in each compound. I always write the positive one first is something else you'll notice. So one way of thinking about it is that my two positive ions are gonna switch places with each other to have a new partner. Another way is just, okay, I still have magnesium, but it needs to bond with someone new, and that someone needs to be negative. It's already bonded to nitrate on the left side, so phosphide is who it must bond with. Notice I'm only looking at this row of ions here because we're gonna re-crisscross on this side. Once I have a positive ion with a new negative ion, I re-crisscross. and it doesn't matter what I had over here on the left. Um, then I have to also add whatever else I haven't used yet. The other positive ion, writing the positive one first, with the other negative ion, and recrisscrossing. I no longer need parentheses for the nitrate because I didn't have to give it an additional subscript when I crisscross. Um, so, just clarifying a few things. Both of those are products because they're on the right hand side. It does not matter if I wrote Mg3P2 first or LiNO3 first. These can trade places. It does matter that within each compound, the positive ions first. Within each compound, the positive ions first. Um, visually, if you don't like just thinking of 
giving each positive ion a new partner, um, you can always just think of taking the first part of each and switching places. Make sure you only switch places on the other side though. We're not messing with the left hand side. The left hand side was good. And that is a complete reaction. We have our reactants, we have our products, we have the arrow. This whole thing is my reaction completed.